I think if anyone wants to make money online or really in any offline online is what kind of relationship are you developing with your prospects and your customers? Right. I think so many people out there are like, let's, let's, what do the numbers say? Let's drive up the conversions. Let's, let's do a hard close here. Let's follow up super hard. All that stuff is good. I love selling. I love closing. Like, right. Mm -hmm. But if we just put the focus on how can I deliver just an exorbitant, exquisite, insane, magnificent amount of value to my customers in ways they never even imagined were possible, then all the money and closes and sales, they just come naturally. Hey, Matt Terrio here on the Epic Real Estate Investing Show. I got a hot show for you today. We're going to talk about high status. We're going to see if you have it and if you want it and you don't have it, we're going to show you how to get it right here on Thought Leader Thursday. All right, so welcome. On today's episode of Thought Leader Thursday, I am joined by founder and chairman of Capital Research International. For 11 years, he has served as coach and consultant to Fortune 500 executives, professional athletes, Navy SEALs, best-selling authors, and Hollywood luminaries. He has been recognized as a top 100 entrepreneur by former president Barack Obama. His key to winning the game of life isn't money, a prestigious degree, or even keeping up with the Kardashians. The latest science reveals that the key is high status, the secret sauce that has enabled the world's most successful people to achieve the life of their dreams in no time at all. We like that. So when he was 23, he woke up one morning with only $23 to his name, coincidentally. Feeling stuck and overwhelmed, he realized that he wasn't going to win the game of life based on what he learned at school and from his parents, but he turned it around in less than a year by applying high status techniques. He's now the world's number one success trainer that shows people how to harness the cutting edge technology, take control of their own destiny, and become a person of power, influence, and remarkable achievement. So please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Jason Capital. Jason, welcome to Epic Real Estate Investing. Thank you, Matt. Great to be here after that uh, incredible introduction. I have, a, I have a high bar to live up to now. Yeah, that was actually like the, the, I think maybe the longest introduction I've ever done here on the show, but you've got a lot of credits and what you do is rather unique. So I want to make sure I, I painted a really good picture and introduced you just to let everybody know who you are. Um, so let's start. All right. Um, Jason, 23 years old with $23 to your name. And so you made like $1 a year your whole life, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I had saved it, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. And you turned it all around in less than a year by applying high status techniques. This is very intriguing to me. Was there something specific that you had at 23 years old with $23 or were you just a normal 23 year old? I was not a normal 23 year old whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, when I was, uh, so I played basketball my whole life and I played in college basketball. Uh, okay. And I, when I was 20 years old, I stopped playing college basketball and I was a normal college kid at Michigan State University. Hated, hated everything traditional. Hate the nine to five is probably you. like the whole idea. Just but this was almost the year for him this year, wasn't it? And, yeah, they almost made it. Yeah. They almost made it. Uh, almost made it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm there and uh, I didn't want like I didn't know what I wanted to do. And in fact, I had a college professor. Uh, who I was a total goof off in class. I, I, I literally, I was that, I was like Ferris Bueller where I brought a newspaper to class and I would hold it up in front of my face just to let the teacher know, in case you couldn't tell I wasn't paying attention, trust me, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> and the professor pulls me aside after and is like, hey, um, you need to figure out what you want to do with your life, young man. And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. I just know I don't want to do what you do. And she's like, she literally says it. She goes, well, do you think I wanted to be a college professor? She goes, that's not what I wanted to do but I need to pay bills. I, I take care of people. I got them doing what I need to do. You need to do the same. And I'm like, there is no way I'm settling for this in my life. And I'd heard about these people who make money online. Right. I'd looked at them. I'd never gone for it. Uh, but there was this, this marketing seminar in Washington, DC that I had a chance to go to. And I'm like, screw it. I'm going. And I go there and I meet a guy who maybe, you know, or have heard of his name is Craig Ballantyne. And uh, I meet Craig and, and he takes me under his wing for whatever reason. And, and he, guides me a little bit and he gives me a plan and I go back to Michigan state in my dorm room and I build an online business and I'm making $20,000 a month uh, at 20 years old. In the very first month I launched this thing mm -hmm. and I, uh, I drop out. Um, I buy a convertible. I park the convertible next to my professor's car so she can see it. And we did a little, a little, you know, discussion there and, and I got the revenge out of my way. And then, um, so I had this business that was making multiple six figures at 20, 21, 22 and uh, around 23, I had moved to California and I had gotten this, this thing, this card that was made it legal to smoke green plants called marijuana. And I had mm -hmm. a bad habit with that. And as the more, it was like, the more I smoked, the less money I made, right? Not that there was a correlation, <laughs> but I just wasn't focused. And mm -hmm. um, it was at that point that I literally had 23 bucks left to my name because the whole business had just completely sputtered out of control. And I had to move back home. I actually lived in my mom's basement for about six months. 
um, then. So I didn't, I wasn't a normal 23 year old. Like I had some online marketing experience. I had some understanding so of this. You were the, you were the online marketer that lived in your mom's basement. At that point. Yes. You were that yes. guy. Okay. I, I was that guy. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't down there like eating Cheetos being a fat <laughs> right. ass, but I was definitely down there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I just had to take a full inventory. Like Jason, why the fuck did you fuck up so much? And how can you make sure that doesn't happen again? And mm -hmm. one of the, th there was two things I realized. One is that I'm really big on this principle called Kaizen. And I'm sure you've heard the term before. Mm -hmm. And it means constant and never ending improvement. Yep. And I realized that my original business had failed because I had stopped Kaizening the things in my life. I had stopped pushing my skills, my craft, my business, my relationships, my networking, you know, just even a little inch each day, I'd stop doing that. And if you're not going forward, you know, it's cliche, but you're going backwards. And mm -hmm. so that was part of it. And the other part was I had just let my own personal habits deteriorate, obviously with the marijuana and, and all the other stuff. I was just, I was hanging out with the wrong people, et cetera. And uh, it was those two things that I had to fix. And I fixed those. And uh, in less than nine months, I became a millionaire. So I was a millionaire at 24. And uh, it just, you know, it's just gone and gone and grown since then. Right. Great. You know, can you think back as I've, I've never had it, I've never had a guest who actually said, I saw this thing where I could make money online. So I gave it a shot. And, <laughs> and so, cause I remember back, I was just when I started into real estate and it got, I got a little bit of a slow start and I got involved in this multi-level marketing company and I built this email list on, or I was building a mail email list on a Weber and I noticed they had an affiliate link. So I sent the affiliate link to my entire downline. And I got one email back said, you just earned $78. And that, I don't think I made another dime on, for, from online for another two years. But that <laughs> right there, that, that held me. And I said, yes, that was so cool, you know. Do you have a moment like that where he's like, boom, this is it? Yeah, well, so I, I take that plan that I got from, from that seminar and then I launched my ebook online. And the very first day we made $7,000 mm. and, and I'd never, like I'd never held more than a hundred dollar bill in my hand. So to see seven grand come in at 20 years old was, I just remember I got, I, I drove a Jeep Liberty back then because that's, that's what my parents got me. Uh -huh. And I literally, the, I mean, which is not the most masculine car, let's be honest here. I'm in a Jeep Liberty and I blast Rick Ross and I put the windows down and I just bump that shit across campus. And I think I'm the richest motherfucker in the world, about 70 grand. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I think I felt pretty darn rich that day too, even though it was only 78 bucks. It just felt so good, you know? And it was, it was like a drug almost. Um, um, tell me, what is, what is high status? Tell me all about this and how did you become aware of them? So uh, the way I, be, I made my first million at 24 was, my second online business, which was a, a dating business. I was, I ran a, a little uh, relationship and dating advice company for men. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you know anything, do you know anything about the pickup artist space or any like, the yeah, I know, I know a couple of the people have got their big starts there. Some of the yeah, household cool, yeah. So, names. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where I got my start. And the, most of that community, the way they taught guys to improve their skills with women was pickup lines. Say this, don't say this, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work for most guys. And I would, it worked for me, right? Because, you know, I'm in well, shape. You. <laughs> and I'm me. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm me, right. It worked for me and it worked for some of my friends and it worked for some of my clients. But for most guys, it, wouldn't, it wasn't working that well. And then mm -hmm. when you get online and you tell guys to say things like, if I tell a guy in an email to say this to a girl, he has no idea how to say it. And like, for instance, you could say to a girl, for instance, uh, you know, uh, you appear very fashionable tonight, right? Like a, a nice little cute line, like a little compliment. Mm -hmm. You could say that in a really flirty way. That's, in, that's intriguing. Or you could say that in a really, really creepy way. If you creepy say it, way, right. right. Mm -hmm. You could be like, you appear very, very fashionable tonight. And she'd be like, who the hell is this? Like, you, right. this is, yeah. So there's that, that was like a big thing. And I'd get emails back from clients and, and or people who read my newsletters or products. And it's like, it's not working for them. I'm like, I got to get to the bottom. Of this. So I hold the seminar and I invite everyone to come for free. And I get like several hundred guys there. And, I meet them in person for the first time, Matt, and I realize why the lines aren't working. I meet them, and I'm like, oh, it's because you're a loser. I get it, <laughs> right? And I mean, that, I mean that in the nicest way possible. It's like, oh, because you, like, you dress like shit, you have terrible body language, you don't know anything about how to project or vocal tonality, you can't mm -hmm. make eye contact. Like, of course no woman's gonna be attracted to you, right? And I realized this whole community had it backwards. It wasn't about teaching them what to say, it was teaching guys how to say things, how to carry themselves, in a high status way, which came down to body language, vocal tonality, and eye contact. Those were the big three. Mm -hmm. So I, I changed my whole coaching and all our brand to focus on those three things. And all of a sudden our students get, are getting these incredible results that just shit on 
the rest of the, the, the competitors in the marketplace. So that was where that concept came from. And, uh, you know, a couple of few years ago, you know, I've been in a relationship for six years now, very, very happy. Like I don't go out six nights a week and pick up girls. Like I'm, that's not my life anymore. So I wasn't passionate about that business. So I made the shift into personal development and helping people, you know, live, live really a badass life. And that was one concept I thought I could bring into the marketplace that no one else knew and no one else talked about. Cause I had this very unique background coming from the dating space. But the truth is, as you know, business is all about people. It's all about relationships. And if you're not carrying yourself in a way that's charismatic or makes people want to learn more about you or be friends with you or introduce you to their friends or their business contacts, you're fucked. And, and being and presenting yourself in a high status way goes a very long way. You know, you mentioned uh, MLM and, and network marketing before. And, and as you know, most people fail in, in network marketing and a few succeed. And if you look at the ones who succeed, you notice they have certain traits that all have in common. And it's usually they're very persuasive people, right? And yep. they're, they're, they're very energetic and, and they, they exhibit a lot of high status traits as well. Yep, yep. And it really is, it's, it's their posture and it's yep. their, I don't know, I guess cleanliness. The, the way that they present themselves, they just look neat and clean and they got their shoulders are back, their head is high and the chest is out. And they don't even have to be good looking to be very successful at doing that. By carrying that posture, it kind of trumps everything. So that was a good point. Uh, certainly rep I've, I've seen so many of them on stage before. I was like, who is this clown? And then they start talking. You're like, oh, that's who this guy is. You know? <laughs> right? Yeah. So today, who is your ideal client and how do you help them? So what I do today is I help people replace rat race income with laptop income. So we take people who maybe have a normal nine to five or they're just finished college and they don't want a normal life. And we equip them with what I call high income skills. So there's in, in my industry, you know, uh, there is a lot of people, a lot of people know there's the Ty Lopez's, there's the Grant Cardone's, there's the Dan Locks. There's a lot of people out there teaching similar stuff mm -hmm. um, or positioning themselves in a similar way. But a lot of them focus on gimmicks, you know, like here's a quick, fast, easy way to make money tonight kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I think quick fixes are bullshit. They don't actually right. work. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is equip people with what we call high income skills. And the big three to me are copy, close and speaking, right? Copy, what word, like words that get cash, right? The words you say to persuade, uh, closing, can you close deals? Can you close people, right? And then speaking, right? Your vocal tonality, your storytelling, your videos, you know, social media, all that kind of stuff. So I'm, my, my experience has been, if I can get someone good at copy, closing, speaking, I don't care what business plan you give them or what industry they go into, they're gonna succeed. Mm -hmm. Of those three, which one do you think is most important? I would say copy. And I would say it simply because, man, words are just so important, right? Like, like, what's the difference? I mean, what's the difference between me saying to you, Matt, you're lying versus Matt, you're mistaken, right? Like one word can change an entire emotional response. And a lot of people out there, and the reason I say copy, by the way, is because everyone's so fucking addicted to their phones today that they suck at socializing. They're bad speakers, they're bad communicators, and we can fix all that. And I like mm -hmm. fixing all that, but it's easier for me to just teach them how to pick the right words that they can type on their computer and send off on a sales letter or a webinar or a video or email or whatever than it is to, you know, it, I can, I can just get them a result faster by teaching them copy mm -hmm. than I can speaking. So to me, it's, it's copy, man. What about you? Yeah, I think copy too. Cause it's, it's something that I've taken on just recently. Um, I've been working with Frank Kern for the last year and boy, he's just a genius. I mean, he, he talks in copy. Like that's the way he talks. And it's just like, I just had one of follow him around with a recording device all the time. And, but I just see how, how much of a difference has made in my business already. So I've made a commitment to become a good copywriter. I think I've always been a good writer. Uh, I've always had elements of being persuasive, but um, I'm really trying to create the skill out of it. And I'm really yeah. incorporating it into my real estate investing business. We've changed a lot of our direct mail pieces. Uh, we've changed our letters. And we just, I know that we sound and look different than everybody else out there that's doing what we're doing and the results are starting to show. So that's just enough feedback for me to keep on going. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah no, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's totally great. What do you like most about what you do? So, I mean, dude, I, I live in Puerto Rico now. So mm -hmm. what I love most about Puerto Rico, besides the, the incredible weather, of course, is the incredible legal tax benefits that we're, we're giving right. here. Uh, so I like that. Um, that's not, but it, living here, like, you know, I wake up and I live on the ocean, so I get to hear the waves coming in every morning. Mm -hmm. um, I wake up, I do my morning ritual on the beach. And then at that point, I can do whatever the hell I want to do that day. 
right? Mm-hmm. And and that to me is the the ultimate joy of what I do. It's my favorite thing. It's it's why I love to do what I do. But more than that, like I don't want to go. Like I don't ask my like. There's that Dean Jackson question, right? Which is he wakes up and he says, "What would I like to do today?" And so long as he can he can do his answer, he's good, right? right? And and his answer might be go golf or hang out at a coffee shop or whatever. When I ask myself that question, that's never my answer. My answer is always like what can I create a value today that will drive my business forward and, and help and impact more people? Like I'm a, I'm a very like, let's, let's do some shit. Let's build some shit. Let's make some video. Mm-hmm. Let's do some awesome stuff. So just the ability, like I'm such a big believer in mastery. Mastery is my number one value above all else. Like finding my zone, my race, and then my skill, my, my gift, whatever you want to call it. And then working on that as much as I possibly can to get as good as, as I possibly can. That's where I found the most joy. So like the fact that I can wake up and I can just hone my craft and work on that skill is that's my reward. I feel like a lot of the people who come to me, they might be an Uber driver. They might be an insurance salesman. They might be a real estate agent. They might, I got a lot of doctors for some reason too, but they have normal jobs and Mm -hmm. their hobbies, their passions, that, that one thing that they love, they don't have the time for it. Yeah. They could wake up earlier, but they don't. Yeah. They could do it after work, but they're already exhausted. They don't have the time to do what they love. And I get to do it all day. So that, by far, that's, dude, that's, that's the joy. That's great. Let's, let's back up a bit and talk about Puerto Rico and what inspired the move because yes. I am actually in a couple months of moving out of California for, for the same reason for, or for a similar reason. I'm not going to Puerto Rico, but I'm certainly going to be in a much more advantage, advantageous position uh, state tax wise. Um, what are the benefits in uh, why, why would you move out of Puerto Rico and say not to a Texas, a 0% state tax? Got you. So there is no federal tax. In no Puerto federal Rico. tax either. There's no federal tax. So obviously a place like Texas or Nevada, uh, you know, there's no state tax. So like me, like I used to live in California where you live now and we, I think it's 13.3% is the state tax yep. or something. It's insane. And for guys like us who are doing pretty significant volume, that's a huge chunk of cash, especially for you in real estate. Like you're like, how many properties could I buy with these fucking money I'm paying in state taxes, right? Totally. totally. Yeah. So I, uh, I just I, like, when I was 25 years old, that was my second year where I actually was doing multiple seven figures, I had to cut a check to Uncle Sam um, for $516,000. And that was after paying my quarterlies. That was how much more I had to pay. And it was like the, the one of the, the hardest, like I had the money, but it was not fun at all. And that was the first strike. And then I got smart and I set up an S Corp and a C Corp and a foundation. We had a nice little thing going there. Like I had a really good money team around me. But still, like this past year, I got, uh, I talked to my CPA and he goes, just so we, let's have a, a quick Zoom call. I'll show you what your 2019 could look like. And I was just looking at these numbers and I, Matt, I'm just like, there's no way I'm paying this. Like, I refuse. I feel like I'm being robbed. Like, this is theft. I'm done. And uh, I'd known a couple of people that moved to Puerto Rico. I'd heard about what they call it's Act 20 and Act 22. And you can go online and, and everyone, I encourage you to, to do the research for yourself, Act 20 and Act 22, and just see what it's about. And and in general, what it is, if you move to Puerto Rico and you move your business to Puerto Rico and you spend more than half the year, so 183 days in Puerto Rico, uh, and you, you of course get the act 20 and act 22, you get approved for it, which is a pretty standard process. You will pay a 4% tax overall. There's no state, there's no federal, no social security. There's not, none of the random taxes, nothing, just 4% total. Uh, and, and that was my big motivation. It was that plus, you know, I, I am aware that my business sells a laptop lifestyle and how much better proof can I have than, hey, I just moved to the fucking beach in Puerto Rico, right? Mm-hmm. So the, I had both of those working in my favor. And I'll just tell you, when I came out here and I met with the CPA uh, to kind of discuss how it worked last year, we went to a cafe and we got coffee and the check came and I'm like, I got it. So I put the credit card down, check comes back. I'm getting the bill, the receipt. I'm writing on the receipt, who I'm with, why I'm there, right? The whole thing I'm, I'm used to doing. And I put the receipt away and he looks at me smiling. I'm like, what? He goes, you realize by next year, you'll never have to do that again. Mm. And I'm like, that, like that, that's the dream. I don't have to save receipts. That's amazing. And I'm like, and, and the reason being, of course, is that, dude, you're paying a 4% tax. Like you'll deduct what you should deduct, but it's not that. It's like, it's like I actually get to keep the money I make. And, and I know that's a far out concept for a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Mm-hmm. And that, dude, that's me. And you know what, what's interesting is, dude, I moved out here. There is a giant community of really successful online entrepreneurs who are already out here and are already have been doing this for, for several years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a guy who lives right next door to me who he was on Joe Rogan's podcast just the other day. His name's Peter Schiff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a, yeah, a really, really smart guy. So he, big he, financial guy. Yeah. Big, big financial guy. A lot of my audience knows who he is. Yeah, Peter Schiff. Awesome dude. I saw him at the gym earlier today. Like, it's just, there's a bunch of these people here, mm-hmm. really, really smart people who are just like, fuck these ridiculous taxes. I'm out. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so two questions now. This is going to turn into a whole different episode. <laughs> sure, man. I don't care. Let's do it. Yeah. So, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. What, what is the, the reason for this benefit or this incentive? Got you. So they wanted a way to stimulate their own economy. So they figure offering entrepreneurs the ability to come here and do business here, they're going to get a lot more people to come out here. And then those people will hire Puerto Ricans and things like that. So I have several employees now that are Puerto Rican. You're not required to have any Puerto Rican employees. I have a couple and you know, I'm eating at restaurants and I'm buying cars and I'm, I'm actually investing in some properties out here. So like I'm, I'm, I'm putting money into their economy. And, and I think a lot of the people that come here do that. Got it. So I've, if I, if I have the timeline right, you've been there about what, six months or so? Dude, uh, four months. Four months? Okay. Yep. And then, uh, so you've been there four months. What would you say are the things you're like, eh, not too excited about this part or <laughs> any downfalls, any cons that you've discovered yet? Totally. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you it's all, you know, unicorns and rainbows. Uh, some of the biggest issues I had was the first one was the internet by far. Mm. Uh, you know, like when we moved in, uh, it took about a week, like we had internet from the start, but it was slow and it was spotty. So it took a while to get that person out here to fix it. That took a week though. That's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. The internet's good. Um, other than that, there are, there's definitely parts of Puerto Rico that are still beat up from Hurricane Maria, which was two years ago that they still haven't fixed. You'll see random phone lines down out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. The other thing though, is I live in a very like kind of closed gated community. Um, and it's almost like a resort where a lot of entrepreneurs live. It's expensive to live here, but if you can swing it, I would recommend doing it here because like I am surrounded by more successful, like good hearted entrepreneurs here than I've ever been in my entire life, like anywhere in America. Mm -hmm. Like I I told my friends when I first moved out here, I went like, there's, there's literally like online marketing mixers where I live. Uh, It's like, I didn't even have that back in Newport beach, right? I used to live in Orange County. Um, So there's that. Right. And, And I literally told my friends when I moved out here after a couple of these mixers, I went to, I was like, dude, I feel poor and stupid here, which is like the best way to be. Like these guys are smarter than me. So I'm learning and they have more money than me. So I'm even more motivated. Like this right. is, a, this is a really good spot. Um, other things that, that maybe could be better. Like, dude, I'm racking my brain. There's, there's not much like a lot, all the, all the normal Costco, all the, the restaurants, the Outback Steakhouses, the chain restaurants, uh, they're all here. Movie theaters are all here. There's malls. If someone's got a wife who likes Chanel or Gucci, all the stores are here. Like all the, all the normal stuff is, is here. It's just like America. I still get Amazon Prime. It's still, it's basically the same. Nice. Yeah. My wife is from Puerto Rico and she still has family there. And I've heard about, you're not the first person to share this, these tax advantages with me before. And I said, well, could we, cause you got family there. I mean, we could pick up and go. And she goes, you'll hate the weather. So how are you feeling about the weather? I'm in love with it. What? Yeah. So, well, so she's again, hot and humid, which she knows I hate. And she okay. says it's over, over the top there. So, obviously the the rule is you have to be here more than six months right right? so i i came here in january and i'll be here until july and then i'll come back in november so those months like august september october which i think when it gets muggiest Mm -hmm. i won't be here Mm -hmm. so if if that was your issue then i would say just just don't be just just pick the right six months to be there exactly perfect well jason you get to talk about business you're talking about copy and closing and speaking. What do you, would you like to talk about more that you don't get the opportunity to? Actually, something I, I do all the time and I, is yoga. Like I'm mm-hmm. a huge yoga guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I, you know, it doesn't, it never comes up in conversation. I'll just say this for anyone out there because I think in our phone addicted culture where everyone's got digital dementia and all this stuff, I, uh, yoga like I know people are stressed I know that a lot of people have anxiety and they're overwhelmed and all this stuff and the ability for an hour a day to to shut off all distractions and your phones and your laptops and then get back into your body and breathe in a practice where it's not competitive it's simply you know yoga isn't to me it's not a physical workout it is a meditation that puts you back in your body and and builds you to be more accepting of yourself and and all Mm -hmm. your your eccentricities and stuff like that um, and then the workout is secondary. So like for, for entrepreneurs, I'm just telling you, anyone's out there hard charging and you're like, 
you would never think of doing yoga. Like the person who's, who's listening right now and is like, I would never do yoga. That is exactly the person who should do yoga. Who should do it, right? Yes. Yeah. It's funny. My wife just went to a, a five-day personal development course that I'm going to be doing later. She says, I want to go home. I don't want to be here. And I was like, <laughs> that is why you should stay, <laughs> right? Yes, it's exactly right. Uh, what yes. commonly held truth do you disagree with? That's, that's the Peter Thiel question, isn't it? Yeah, I think you gave me this question. Remember, I, I said I was asking. I think the... I think I think Alex Ramosi. I, I wish I could take. Oh, okay, maybe it was. Who's who's brilliant? Also, yeah. Last week I had a uh, Grant Cardone on. And, Is that right? Yeah, he ran off about twenty commonly held truths he disagreed <laughs> with. He was he was ready. He had him at the ready. He was ready. So I I mean I, there's so there's so many things like I since since I was a kid I've always been I guess what you call a, a free thinker. Um, I've just I've always disagreed with basically everybody on everything. Uh, like I remember being seven and asking my dad, I was like, why do they keep time? Like, who the hell cares? This is like stupid. Right. And I'm like 11. And I'm like, dad, why do they wear blue jeans? Like th th they're blue, their jeans they are not comfortable. Like, why would you wear those? Wouldn't you rather wear sweatpants? Isn't that more comfortable? Right. Like, like those were like things I've always thought about. I've always disagreed with. Um, so one, one commonly held truth uh, would be, uh, man, how about this? Building your business is a, uh, is a numbers game. I think that's, that's not true at all. Mm. I think it's mm -hmm. a people game and a relationship game mm. by mm -hmm. far. And I think if anyone wants to make money online or really in any offline online is what kind of relationship are you developing with your prospects and your customers? Right. I think so many people out there are like, let's, let's, what do the numbers say? Let's drive up the conversions. Let's, let's do a hard close here. Let's follow up super hard. All that stuff is good. I love selling. I love closing. Like, right. Mm -hmm. But if we just put the focus on how can I deliver just an exorbitant, exquisite, insane, magnificent amount of value to my customers in ways they never even imagined were possible, then all the money and closes and sales, they just come naturally. And I think if we just put the focus on creating like obsessed, like I want my customers to be addicted to what we do, like, right. like chemically addicted to it, not because I'm putting cocaine in the fucking courses, but because the, the content and, and what it does for them on a deep spiritual level is just so powerful that they would never dream of going anywhere else. And right. I think if more people did that, then they'd be, they'd be way better off. Yeah. You know, Gary Vee has a version of that. He, he wants to guilt people into doing business with him, right? I like that. Yeah. I'll make you feel, and then uh, Frank's uh, thing is uh, I, I show people I can help them by actually helping them first before their clients, right? Yes. So you're in yeah, good company exactly there. Right. Yeah. And you know, the Gary V thing is funny to me. I was talking with a buddy of mine about it and uh, you know how he talks about how like he never sells, right? That's his mm -hmm. whole thing. I just give and I give and I give and I never sell. Mm -hmm. That guy sells more products than any, than all of us combined. He's got yeah. wine. He's got sneakers. He's got his actual agency. He's mm -hmm. got his $10,000 days, right? He's, he's constantly selling. Right? Totally. And I think, I think that's like the ultimate trick. If someone's a guru or you're, you're front facing, you have a platform or an audience is, how can you convince your audience that you never sell while you sell all the time? That's, that's a really good, and that, and that's, that comes back to like uh, positioning yourself, right. As the advisor, as opposed to the salesperson. Mm -hmm. He's got the, well, he has the one comment. He says, don't listen to what I say. Watch what I do. Right. 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 And, he, and he's yeah. selling all the time when he says, but the, the irony of that is if you listen to him say that, then you're not listening to what he's doing. Exactly. You're, you're listening to what he's saying when he says, don't listen to what I say. So now you're like, all right, what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn it off. Right. I'm just yeah. going to watch. Um, all right. So let's bring this home. Uh, game. I like to play with all of my guests. Uh, one of the uh, more impactful things I've gotten out of mastermind groups, particularly mastermind groups where there were no other real estate people involved. I got amazing insights from other people's businesses and other people's industries on how it's impacted my business. And it's, it's developed a, well, like we've got our own agency now just for real estate investors, just based off all the insight I've gotten from other people. So Using your superpowers, okay, let's imagine, Jason, you are a real estate investor and you're looking for distressed properties. You're looking for discounted off-market real estate. Using your superpowers of copy, close, and speaking, what's the first thing comes to mind to have how you go and find those? I would see the first thing I would do is I would put out an ad in a newspaper calling people who had recently lost their jobs Mm -hmm. or, or something like that had been laid off from work or just calling out to people who were in a crunch and needed money to sell their home. That, I don't know if that makes perfect sense, but that, that would be the first thing I would do. I would use copy and I'd put ads in the newspaper and, mm -hmm. and I might even do it. This, see, this is where I would get tricky. I might even not say I'm looking to buy homes or anything like that. I might say that I'm a publisher for a 
uh, a national magazine where we're looking to interview and feature people who were recently laid off or people who are looking to, to sell their homes or, or they, need to, they need to skip out of town really fast or something like that. So that way people put their guard down, you get a bigger response because they think they're going to be featured in a magazine. And then you interview them for the magazine, but the interview is secretly a sales interview and you close them right after the, the interview. Got it. That makes sense? Yeah. Little, uh, right. little, little ninja-like. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you where I get the idea. So for a lot of my students, we help them get local businesses as clients. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them would go like door to door, like you go to a shopping center, you just go to every single store in the shopping center and try and find the manager, the owner. And, you know, of course, some gatekeeper is like, nope, get out of here. Nope, get out of here, right. nope, get out of here. So I taught them to go in there and don't sell, look to give, go in there and say, hey, I'm the publisher for this local marketing newsletter. I'd love to interview and feature you guys in the newsletter. Can I speak to the owner to get a, a quote from him for our next issue? And mm -hmm. now because you're coming with value, owner goes, yeah, I'd love to get featured. And then the question, of course, is some type of problem awareness question. So you ask them the question, you get the quote. And then after the interview, you go, by the way, that problem you said you had, like, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And it goes right into a sales interview right there. So it's, mm. it's kind of that same kind of idea. But do they actually have a newsletter? Well, what is a newsletter? It's, <laughs> all right. an, email. it's an, email. an email. That's all it is. Yeah. They actually, they actually do create a newsletter. And, it's, and what they'll do is, is, in addition to trying to close that person, after they get the question, they'll say, hey, do you want me to add it in the newsletter so you can see your quote? Mm -hmm. Yep. The person says, yes. So now they're building up a big ass newsletter of local businesses at the same time. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. There's some stuff in there. That's some good stuff. <laughs> good answer, Jace. Cool. Man. Um, it's been a pleasure. If uh, someone wanted to get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Best way by far. So uh, I'm going to, I'll just blatantly say, I'm going to pitch here for about 30 seconds, something that Please I think go. everyone should get into. So I recently challenged myself to create a hundred millionaire students in the next three years. I just started a couple months ago. I have two millionaire students so far. Um, the first couple months, obviously I got some work ways to go. So what I'm doing is every single week on a live zoom call like this with the whole group, I am training people in high income skills from every single industry, real estate included. Um, and we go for an hour. I answer your questions. I basically personally mentor you the same way I mentor all my, my different millionaire students. It's every single week. It's pretty, the, the group is amazing. We've had a few thousand people already join and it's like Netflix for entrepreneurs. It's 10 bucks a month, 995 a month. It's almost nothing. Uh, live call every single week. So if anyone wants me to personally mention them every single week and join us in the group, I would say get your butt in there and they can find that at jcapitaltraining.com. So just the letter J and then capitaltraining.com. Got it. Perfect. I did have one more question because I want to, I want to pull this. Yeah. It's um, if there were three guiding principles for your success, what would they be? So the first one is Kaizen by far, like everything in my life is Kaizen. Just get a little bit better every single day. Mm -hmm. My, my implementation of this is I, uh, I study for 60 minutes every single day. I take Sundays off, but every single day I carve out an hour to study a course, a book, something to keep working and, and mastering my craft. The second thing is the morning ritual, right? Like I think that's so freaking important. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Robin Sharma. He's a great book called the 5 a.m. club. Um, and you can read more about how to implement your own morning ritual based on all his teachings, which are fantastic. Um, so we got Kaizen, we got the 5 a.m. club. And then the third one I would say is just leading with value in everything that I do. Like always trying to like all, never thinking, how can I get always thinking, how can I give to this person? And I, I just think of it as I'm storing favors in everyone's back pocket. That's all I want to do. I just want to store favors in everyone's back pocket by giving and giving and giving so that when I need to ask later, there's no, there's no pitch that needs to be made. It's right. just, Hey man, can you do this? And, and the answer is usually yes. Nice. Lovely. Let's see. So Kaizen, constant and never ending improving. We've got the morning, morning ritual. Yep. So you start the day the same every day yep. and then leading with value. Yeah, man. What can you give versus what can you get? Right? Yep. Super. I think there's a ton of stuff in there. Um, and then one thing to go back, if you wanted to, to recommend one book on how to become a good copywriter, what would that book be? Good question. I, <gasps> the book by far is my dog. I'm crazy over here. Uh, is is a book called uh, Breakthrough Advertising, um, mm. which is a like a classic copywriting book. It's, it's kind of hard to find your a copy on Amazon, but that book uh, is insanely insightful. I had lunch uh, last week with a guy named Craig Clemens, who's probably the best copywriter on the planet. Um, like like all the top copywriters will tell you, Craig is is brilliant. He actually started with Edmund Pagan back in the day. But I was talking with Craig and we both were talking about this book here. And he goes, he goes, everyone asked me how to write copy. And I tell him, I literally can't tell you anything that's not in that book, Breakthrough Advertising. It's all there. Sweet. That's where, that's where to start. All right, well, check it out. 
because you know, as us over here as real estate investors, we're actually marketers first. And so I think uh, I didn't anticipate this coming up, but I think a uh, copy is a great skill an additional skill that we can all add to our toolbox, right? Absolutely, man. Sweet. Well, thanks, Jace. I'll see you again. Let's do it again. All right. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. All righty. God bless to your success. I'm Matt Terry. I'll see you next week on another episode of Thought Leader Thursday. Take care.